you are worthy, Lord. You are worthy to be praised and to be adored. You are worthy in our home, in everything that you that we are doing. You are, we say you are worthy. We acknowledge you in all areas of our being. Thank you for giving us the grace once again to gather together in your name, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, your everlasting name from generation to generation, according to your words in the book of Exodus. Father, Lord, we thank in the ministration of today. Teach us a new thing. Open our mind and our spiritual eyes, spiritual thoughts. Let them yearn for your word today. Let them learn a lot from you, almighty God, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Um, brethren, today is a special day. Is it uh, is a special day because we're going to we're going to see significant things that uh, um the Christian supposed to be doing. This is different from the pillar of of Christian. This is our our what will I say? Our task. Praise the Lord. The task of of the children of God. Praise the Lord. Four important things that we're supposed to acknowledge in our in our Christian life, which has been laid down by our Lord Jesus Christ, and the apostle, they also embrace it till death. They embrace this act continuously. What is that? What is this um, that we are we are saying? What is it that? Christians supposed to engage themselves. You know, in those days, the uh, uh, you know the apostles after Jesus Christ ascended, then they realized that they 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 ought to be doing something, such so, such that their life will not be uh, vacuum, a vacuum will not engulf them. Such that when a place is empty and there's a vacuum, there is tendency for any sort of uh, powers to jump in. Sometimes demons can come, sometimes um, when it is not well prepared. But the way for us to prepare our life continuously, which the apostle also engage in, is what we are going to discuss today. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And all these things work together for the children of God. All these things, they work together for the children of God such that their life will not be disengaged with the authority in heaven. Praise the Lord. According to the book of Romans chapter 8 from verse 35, it said, Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tri tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword as it is written? For your sake, we are being killed all the day long. We are regarded as a sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things, we are more than conqueror through him who loved us. Praise the Lord. Through him, we are more than conqueror through him that loves us. But you have to acknowledge that God who loves you before you can claim the victory. Praise the Lord. So the children of Israel, that is the apostles, they, they conquered and part of their enterprise is what you and I are enjoying today. Praise the Lord. For them not to be separated from the love of Christ, then they engage in four things. What are these four things that they engage in? Number one, they engage themselves in apostolic teaching. They engage themselves in apostolic teaching. You know, like you are, I'll give you an example. You know, when you listen to the word of, of God, the, the edifying words of God, not the edifying words of uh, uh, non-edifying preachings or teachings, the edifying words of God. Many people confusing um. There are different types of preaching um, and preaching and motivational speech are different. Hello, motivational speech and, 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 and apostolic teachings are different. We are mixing them up. Praise the Lord. We are mixing them up. Hence, 
we don't actually know who is called to be an apostle and who is called to be a motivational speaker. A motivational speaker is not normally a pastor. A motivational speaker is not normally a reverend. They are to engage people in apostolic teaching. That is the embedment of the wisdom, knowledge, and understanding of the Bible that is the word of God that he gave us, the love to, in order for us to, to um, um, continue in that relationship with God, the word of God strengthen our mind, not only strengthen our mind, but our our spiritual life is backed up by the love of God. And that is what the book of Romans chapter 8 is telling us that who, who can separate us or who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Who shall, is a question, there's a, you will see that there's a question mark there. But you can see that there are so many things that is said after that could separate mankind from this love of Christ. If you are not engaging yourself in apostolic teachings, hence we see many people going astray, many people going after things that they are not supposed to be going after. Many people found um, a simple, um, a simple method of mankind bringing a lot of people together started perf uh, start performing theater start performing start performing some kind of rituals in the in the sanctuary and they cannot even see that these are not apostolic teachings praise the lord okay let us read the book of matthew chapter 28 the book of matthew chapter 28 let us all open our bible to the book of matthew chapter 28 from verse 20, from verse 20, are we all there? Then I'll read. It says, teaching them to observe all things, teaching them, that is, this is an instruction to the apostles now, you know, the 12 apostles. This is, that by then they now grew more than 12, um, eventually in order for them to spread the, the good news um, the work of God all over the world such that you and I we are enjoying, I mean the one that you and I are enjoying today showing us about the characters giving us the importance of what to watch out for the spirit of discernment how to know those hypocrites around us but all this motivational speaking and diabolical preaching and the, the doctrine of, the, of Balaam that has engulfed the church, does not allow the true Christian that want to yearn after the love of God, after the love of Christ, they, they don't allow them to, to, to know the right from the wrong anymore. People cannot differentiate what is motivational speaker and um, um, a pastor. Even now, some pastors are now trying to to become a motivational speaker in order to gain more money. The Bible did not allow or did not tell us that uh, the apostles became the, the um, um, apostolic teaching or they engaged themselves in apostolic teaching as a result of gaining money. No, it wasn't as a result of gaining money. It was as a result of gaining people to Christ bringing people out of darkness into the limelight of God. That happens to be the root of the office, I mean, the root of the works that God has placed the pastors and the, and the reverends in that office of authority. It is office of authority, according to the book of um, Matthew chapter 28, verse 20. It says, teaching them, okay, before we go into the let us read from 18. Uh, you know, when I when I try to read Matthew. the Matthew 28, yeah, Matthew 28 from verse 20, 
that was that was where I wanted to read. But I want us to take it a little bit high up. You know, I, I, everyone that has been following this ministration has said when they quote a Bible to you, for you to understand it, read a little bit above it and then read a, a little bit below it so that you get the concept of, of the teaching the apostolic teaching there, not because they will just pick a phrase or a, a paragraph or a, a verse and use it and turn it to their own gain, say, so, um, um, aims and intention. No, 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 no. You won't benefit from that. But if you try to read it from a little bit up, so let us find out who is actually speaking here, you want to know. Whenever you are reading a Bible, when they quote a Bible for you, try to understand and establish a few things. Who is speaking and to which audience? Are you getting it now? Oftentimes, we always, we saw it when we are reading or studying the book of Numbers, where people are in, the, in, the, in, in recent time, they started using um, the context of Balaam um, to pray to themselves and the context of Baal to, to, to pray for themselves. It is due to um, lack of apostolic teaching. Are you getting lack of apostolic teaching has corrupted the world to the extent that we don't even know what is the rightful message and what it is a wrong doctrine. They've diffused everything. But all those things are what I've been preaching for the past four weeks, that they are the doctrine of Balaam, that even God in the, in the book of Revelation, chapter 2, mentioned about it. Praise the Lord. So, verse 18, we said, let us read from a bit high up from verse 8. And Jesus came and spoke to them. So now we've established something. We've established that it was Jesus speaking here. It wasn't a Bab, uh, it wasn't Belak, it wasn't Belam, it wasn't um, any anyone at all. And the Bible told us in, in from verse eighteen. And Jesus came and spoke to them, saying, "All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth." Are you getting it? The source of the power. What is that source of the power? For you to know that you are listening to a unique teaching today. What we are teaching today is that any engagement of you in preaching or teaching, apostolic teaching, is empowered by the heavens because Jesus Christ mentioning that all authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. The authority and, and power being extended to the apostles and those that embrace the words of God. The moment you start meditating on the word of God and engage yourself in teaching the word of God, the authority and the eloquent wisdom of God comes upon you and you will start preaching the word of God powered by heaven. You, you, you understand now? Powered by heavenlies. So, and you are exercising it on earth. This happens to be the instruction. Verse 19 now goes further. It says, go therefore. It, it, that, that was a command. Are you getting me now? That was a command. At least for us to know that the words of the Most High God that we are preaching to you are backed up by heaven. That, that was what the verse 18 was telling you and I, that we should be bold and confident, that we should not allow anything whatsoever to take us away from that love of God, that is the love of Christ, to hearken to his words. You know that was a command in verse 19 now. In verse 19 says that, go therefore, and make disciples of all the nations. Did you hear that? To go and make disciples of all the nations. I'm sorry that you am not, this is not a, a motivational speaking of, of the life. You understand? So let us let us 
focus on 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 certain things the commandment go therefore and make the disciple of all nations baptizing them in the name of the father and of this uh, and of the spirit and of the holy spirit of the son and of the holy spirit my bible here baptizing in the name of the father and of the son and of the Holy Spirit. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Verse 20 now, where we are going. Teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Teaching them everything. All things that I have commanded you. That is the apostolic instruction, apostolic teaching. Are you getting it now? That is what we need to be listening to. That is what we need to be to be yearning to to to, to hear in any message, any Christian message. It is an apostolic teaching that we make us to be steadfast in love with the love of God that he has given unto us. He, he gave it to us willingly. We, we did not deserve it. So therefore, what we make you to be steadfast in this love is for you to entrench yourself in the apostolic teaching, yearning to listen to apostolic teaching, which is different from motivational speaking. I'm not saying that you don't listen to motivational uh, speakers like how, I mean, like the business type, how, what to do in business, how to how to make wealth. You understand me now? That one is, is different. That one is different. We are mixing them up. Many people are calling the motivational speakers uh, the pastors. Uh, no, no, they are not. They are not. They are two different areas. Apology to the motivational speakers. Or if I want to switch to motivating, um, that is, I want to, uh, um, uh, I want to conduct a motivational uh, speech. Then I will pick a topic which happens to be something about um, life. But these are spiritual. These ones are spiritual. So trying to bring in those motivational speech into uh, the apostolic teaching is wrong. It's wrong. And it confuses many brethren and many people in the world such that they don't know when they are even bowing down to um, Balaam doctrine. You understand? They don't know when they are bowing down or um, accepting to their soul, spirit, and body the doctrine of the Balaam. Hence, there's so much pollution in the world. The pollution in the world makes them makes mankind to be confused. And when they are confused, they are being driven away from the love of Christ. According to the book of Romans chapter 35, that says that, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? All those mis mixed match makes them to be separated from the love of God. So when they see tribulation, they panic. When they see distress, they run. When they see persecution, oh, they are all over places. When famine comes, they became slaves. When nakedness comes or danger comes or war comes, instead of them to stand fast in that love of Christ, they became disarrayed. That is what we that is what the book of Romans is telling us here. That we should not condone to that because God love will stand forever. Praise the Lord. God's love will stand forever. Praise the Lord. For I am sure that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor heights, nor depths. No anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Trust me, for you to be bold, 
to say that for I am I am sure that neither death nor life nor angels nor rulers nor things present nor things to come nor powers nor height nor death nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ. You have to be entrenched in apostolic teaching. Example, when you are in a congregation, they are throwing you orange. They said that is where your breakthroughs is. They are technically telling you and introducing you to the doctrine of Balaam. When they are drinking and they, they say that until you are able to drink from that bottle, you pay 2,000 pounds to drink from that bottle because the apostle has drank from that bottle, that those are Balaam doctrines. So they have, they have technically removed your mindset. They've removed your mind away from the love of Christ. They are telling you that the love of Christ does not count anymore. It is their orange and it is their bottle of water. It is their laying of hands or it is their power, not the power of God anymore, that will make you to be steadfast, coming in all tribulations, distress, persecution. But you place all these things on their oranges. You place all these circumstances on their water, you place all these circumstances on their anointing oil that they are selling, you place it, they fail. They fail because that is not apostolic teaching that Jesus Christ commanded us to engage the nation. Praise the Lord. I cannot stress this more because there's a reason that Jesus Christ rose up. I did mean Jesus Christ did not rise. Then all this false doctrine will have been meaningful or make sense. But because Jesus Christ rose from the dead, and ascended to sit at the right side of the Most High, whereby he commands all authority and powers. And there is no iota of any power that can contest with his authority. Then you and I, we need to all the time search for the apostolic teaching and not again but Balaam doctrine in the sanctuary. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. It will have been so wonderful for us to engage in this. I could teach this a whole day long, but the apostolic teaching, I still have more others to cover. Hence, and I've got only one hour to preach this. So I wouldn't stretch it longer, but there will be a time that the topic will be only apostolic teaching. What do we want to understand? What do we want to gain from apostolic teaching? It is nothing else than the steadfast love of God. You understand? It is nothing else than the steadfast, you knowing the steadfast love of God for you what God has done, the purpose of Jesus Christ on the surface of the planet and the enterprise and the, 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 the victory he has given you and I over the power of darkness. That is where the apostolic teaching comes, that, that, that comes out from. I mean, that is what you gain from apostolic teaching. Praise the Lord. So another thing, another thing that I want us to look into is fellowship. You know, I told you there are four things that Christians are supposed to be engaging themselves in all the time. Number one is apostolic teaching. Yen to listen to apostolic teaching. There are so many great men of God out there that they are really man of God. They will not teach you anything apart from the commandment of our Lord Jesus Christ. 
apostolic teaching that is drawing more people into the kingdom of the Most High God, strengthening them in power of the Most High God, the love of God, introducing the love of Christ to many. That is the pillar. That is the, that is the mandate of the apostles and the reverends and the bishops, whatever name they call themselves. This is the authority that God himself on earth commanded them. So go, praise the Lord. It was a command. He said, go therefore and make disciples. That is, bring more people. And then we saw it in the book of Apostles. As the people, as the apostles, uh, the act of apostles, when the apostles themselves, they now start engaging. They are doing what God want them to do. They start, they come together in one accord. The Bible made us to, to understand in the book of the book of Acts. And the one thing that I, 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 I cherish there was that they were in one accord and they were glad. You understand? And then Holy Spirit came. Praise the Lord. And they won many disciples. About 3,000 souls were added about 3,000 souls. That was not a small number. About 3,000 were added to them when they started in the apostolic teaching. Are you getting it now? So apostolic teaching brings about more miracles. And the miracles are only to do what? To win more souls. Not the one that you are diabolically or arranging. Eventually, the church will that that congregation will scatter because it was not receiving the power promise in the book of Matthew, chapter twenty-eight, from verse eighteen. So all authority has been given to me, both in heaven and on earth. So your apostolic preaching is supposed to be backed up from the authority from heaven and the one on earth. Are you getting it now? Are you getting it now? So we will we will, we will, we will move to the next one. Fellowship. Praise the Lord. Let us, let us all go into the book of John. First John. Praise the Lord. First John. First John. If you are there, shout hallelujah. Please open first John and first John. Praise the Lord. The book, if you are there, read. I want it to be, I don't want it to be just one-sided. First John. Praise the Lord. First John from, from chapter one. Are we all there? First John from chapter one. From verse one. Chapter one, verse one. That, that which was from the beginning, yes. we have heard, mm -hmm. which we have seen with our eyes, yes, which we have looked upon. Oh, hold on, hold on, please. Are we all there? Please open your Bible to this. This is very interesting. When you want to know about fellowship, please read this. First John from chapter one. What is fellowship? What do you understand by fellowship? What is it all about? You know, I, you know, I told you that uh, they are part of things that people. So from this teaching, you'll be able to know whom you are meant to fellowship with. Are you getting it now? So let us let us read on. That which was from the beginning, mm -hmm. which was which we have heard, yes, which we have seen with our eyes, yes. Which we have looked upon, yes, and our hands have answered, yes, concerning the word of life. Concerning the word of life, remember, it is still connected to the apostolic teaching, the word of life. In the apostolic teaching, you are hearing 
the word of life through a fellowship. I told you today's ministration is unique. You understand now? Today's ministration is unique. It is everything is connected. And I'll, from now on, you will understand Christian life and you will understand, you will understand um, how important you are to yourself and to the world and to the people around you. And that is what we are saying, that let your character be a sign, a symbol. It's a symbol. You understand? Your, your life to be a symbol. You are, your, your life and your character is preaching to others. And for you to have a renewal of mind and a reformed people, that was the purpose of this. Note very well that these people, they were not, they were not transformed. But that is why Jesus Christ said, go into the world and preach. You understand? So that they will have a renewal of mind. And that is what the fellowship is all about. So please, please read on. Verse 2. Verse 2. The light was manifested. Yes. You have seen and bear witness. Yes. And declare to you that eternal life yes. was with the Father <laughs> and was manifested to us. Yes. That which we have seen and heard, we declare to you mm -hmm. that you also may have fellowship with yes. us. Yes. And truly, our fellowship is with the Father mm -hmm. and with His Son, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Did you see the importance of fellowship now? So, in any fellowship, what you are looking for is that that fellowship will have to, to have a stand on, on the fellowshipping with the Father and a son, Jesus Christ. If you're fellowshipping with any congregation and you cannot see God in there, you cannot see traces of Christ-like in there, run. Hello, should I say that again? Run. Because it is very dangerous. Because you don't know what they are luring you into when a pastor starts saying that during his time i did mean he was alive during jesus christ's time then his name will have been in the bible you know that that is not the teaching that we are teaching in uh, that jesus christ ordained us to go out there to be teaching you understand me now? So in your fellowshipping, you want to found, or you should found God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit there. If you are do, if in any way or congregation you found yourself as apostolic teaching is going on, you need to be able to establish God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. If you are unable to find those in there, run, move out. You do not owe anybody. If you are going there purposely for motivational talk, you can stay. But if you are going there for apostolic teaching, three unique things you want to establish there that God is here. His son is here and the Holy Spirit is in, in control. You understand? So according to the book of First John, chapter 1, and we're reading verse 3, it said, that which we have seen and heard, we declare to you that you also may have fellowship with us and truly our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. And these things we write to you that your joy may be full, that your joy may be full, that you also may receive your own personal encounter with the God, with the, with God Almighty, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. There is nothing that is so important if you are able to have that encounter with him these people they had that encounter and that is why they are sharing it in the in the fellowship you understand now? 
And what, what we are talking about, this fellowship, it is not a massive congregation or this. They are house cells as well. They started from, from, from underground house cells. So it doesn't matter because God said that where two or more are gathered together, he said, I am there. It does not matter how many you are. The most important thing is that God's name is glorified in your gathering. Wherever you gather together in the name of Almighty God, he said, I am there. And he will manifest his glory there. Praise the Lord. It is not by your might or by your power. You do not have to interfere with the power of God. You do not need to convince anyone. It is not your job to convince anyone. Leave everything to him. He will do it. Praise the Lord. He will do it. Provided you are standing upon the righteousness of God, your altar is, is erected only on the name of the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, you will triumph and, and you will gain more disciples. It is not something that you have to, 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 to go and be conjuring or you want more people through diabolical means. No. That is not what God wants us to do. That's not what God wants us to do. The apostle did not engage in diabolical power before you and I started obeying and to come and listen to the word of God or to worship together and fellowship together. Praise the Lord. Praise the, praise the Lord. So, and verse 5 now. Can, can you please continue with the verse 5? This is the message which we have heard from him. Yes, and declared and declared to you that God is light and in Him is no darkness at all. Mm -hmm. Continue. If we say that we have fellowship with Him, yes, and walk in darkness, mm -hmm. we lie and do not practice the truth. Hallelujah. Did you see the did you see the importance of the apostolic teaching now? When you now come together, that is the fellowship, and then the the transformation, the word of God becomes lightened inside of you, transforming your reasoning faculty, transforming your decision and your connection with the with the spiritual realm, with the spiritual. You know, I told you, once you are able to be on the low, just like in the last week ministration, try to be on the higher realm. The moment you are working, you are allowing these people to bring you to the lower realm, that is, start um, condemning your belief in the Lord that they are the only God, that the only one that God speaks to, they are only trying to put you below their realm. Do not allow that. No pastor have the audacity or authority to tell you that you God does not speak to you. Hello? God speaks to every of his creation. Oh, I am the only one that God speaks to. Doesn't exist in the Bible. Are you getting it now? It does not exist in the Bible. He sees what everyone doing. He speaks to everyone. If he can speak to a donkey. So how come he will not speak to you that you are even of a higher potential? He said, let us create man in our own image. So he speaks to the he speaks to the donkey and he even speaks through the donkey. He puts his words, which is which defiles the whole ordinances. He puts just because of his people, he puts the word, his own words on, on, on the mouth of a donkey and the mouth of babies to speak things that are meant to happen. So how come that it is only your pastors that God will speak to? No, ma, no, sir, I disagree. There is no, there is no foundation of that word in the Bible. As a matter of fact, God might be speaking to you more than I, only because the lack of Apostolic teaching does not allow you to identify when God is speaking and when the devil is speaking. Remember, 
oh, how does that happen? How, and the, somebody might be saying that, oh, does this pastor know knows what he's saying? Oh, oh yes. Uh, go and read the book of Samuel. Go and read the book of Samuel. Even Samuel, already in the sanctuary, it, it, the Bible didn't tell us that he was he was a novice or 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 um, God see him or God sees him as a child or that God did not God did not want to talk to him or the, no 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 God still spoke to him that's why being in the sanctuary and he didn't know who was speaking but through the guidance of an apostle that is higher, a prophet that is higher, he was able to get that apostolic teaching to recognize when God, not only to recognize, also to know what to say. Hello. To know what to say. You know, it's just like answer and question. In the school, they ask you what is one plus one, and you are saying 10. So you know that you are not... You are not correlating with that person. Or they said, "What is one plus one?" You are talking about. Uh, you are talking about um, velocity. You understand? They said one plus one. You are talking about. You are talking about velocity. You know that you are not in the same realm. You are not talking the same thing anymore. But for you to be able to walk according to this, to to the instruction of the Most High God, so that you can speak and listen to the word of Rema. The apostolic teachings are very important. And these are things that you gain in the fellowshipping with the brethren. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. According to the book of Acts chapter 2, it says, and they devoted themselves to the apostles. They devoted themselves to the apostles. So yearn for the fellowshipping. You understand? To hear the 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 apostolic teaching, you understand? The Bible said that, and they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and the fellowship. They devoted themselves, not to devote yourself to just any Dick and Harry um, um, preaching on the YouTube or anywhere. Oh, they said they are, do they are doing something there, you run there. They're doing something there, you run there. No, 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 no. Let God know where you belong and he will bless you there. It now matters on what you are hearing. Are you increasing in the power of Christ? Are your spiritual lives enlarging or increasing? Is your relationship with God is steadfast? That you know that there is nothing can take you away from the love of God. That is the apostolic teaching. Apostolic teaching is not throwing you, not throwing you um, oranges in the in the sanctuary. No, no, no. It's not throwing you banana in the sanctuary. It is not throwing you waters in the in the sanctuary. That is not apostolic. Those are the teachings of Balaam, corrupting the mind of the Israelites. You you know what happened to them when they got to um. Um, the book of Numbers chapter 25, they went after strange God and they grieved God. Balaam said that, oh, uh, Balak, the reason we are unable to conquer these people in the spiritual realm was because God was with them, because they were steadfast with God. The reason they were, the reason that we are unable to curse these people, I know you want to curse the pe these people so that you can defeat them, but they are undefeated because they are steadfast in the love of God. Let us derail them. Let us, let us do something that will make them to, to, to sidetrack. Let us, let, us, let us confuse them with this doctrine, with this Balaam doctrine. You know what you should do? Pack beautiful women. Pack, pack beautiful women and push it in their midst and let them go after your own gods. So what happened? They started longing after the children of the Moabah that are beautiful. And then those girls started taking the children of Israel, their male, to where? To the Barpio. And they started bowing down to an, and making feasts with them. And God's anger was arose. Remember, in the book of Numbers, chapter 25, the Bible made us to understand that about, about 24,000 were killed in that plague that came upon them as a result of 
the relinquishing the steadfast of love or like turning their back against the steadfast love of God. What I am preaching to you is real. I'm not preaching outside any other Bible or context. Read the Bible. Everything that I mention, if you cannot relate it with the Bible, throw it away. Are you getting it now? So, they devoted themselves. So your devotion will be to fellowship. What are you fellowshipping with? What do you want to gain in that fellowship? You want to gain apostolic teaching. You understand? Because the Bible made us to understand that they devoted themselves to the apostles, teaching and fellowship, to break, to the breaking of bread and prayers. To the, what? To the breaking of bread and prayers we're still going to so we we are we are we have taken the apostolic teaching and we have that is the core of our that is the core of our, of our administration today act of apostles chapter 2 verse 42 they devoted themselves to the apost apostles teaching the fellowship the breaking of bread that is the communion that is, so you know sometimes some people will tell you that oh uh, the the communion is this but we're going to go there we're going to go to that very soon yeah but oh, because of time so I will, I will because of time I will I will, I will, I will rush it um, so, but if we walk in the light as it is in the light we have fellowship with one another first John chapter one verse seven so, but if we walk in the light how do you walk in the light? You cannot walk in the light if you don't hear all this teaching and fellowship with the people of the light. You cannot fellowship with the people of darkness and expect yourself to walk in the light. Praise the Lord. Are you getting that? I think I need to use that as a slogan. There is no way you can walk with the people of darkness and expect yourself to walk in the light of God. He said, but if we walk, it's a conditioner. If we walk in the light, as he is in the light, that is, our God is in the light. Jesus Christ is the light. We have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sins. Cleanses us from all sins. So the reason you want to fellowship as well the reason, the reason we, the reason, oh, I've just been told that I don't need to rush it. That it is a very, so we will continue from it next time. But let me explain with this fellowship. We will do the part two of this wonderful teaching. You understand? The fellowship, what do you want to gain in fellowship? And or, or you cannot fellowship with the power of darkness because Jesus Christ is not in there. Hello, Jesus Christ will never associate himself with darkness. So, therefore, if we walk in the light as he is inside that light, what do you benefit? What does it say? So we we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus, His Son, cleanses us from all sins. The blood of Jesus cleanses us from all sin. So you cannot associate yourself or be walking in the darkness, and expected the blood of His Son, our Lord God, to cleanse you from all sins. Hence. All these things hinders prayer. If your sins are not being cleansed, the prayers are not being answered. So we're going to go next week with the Holy Communion and the prayers. How does this relate to our prayers and our communion? We are going to look into that, but I'll give you a hint of the purpose of us fellowshipping together Listening to the apostolic teaching makes us to walk in the light of God because you have devoted yourself. You are yearning to listen to those apostolic teaching, 
transforming any darkness inside of you, taking away every darkness around you, making your atmosphere to be lighted up by the power, by the light of God and the power and the authority from heaven resides upon you. And once that happens, you can now ask for cleansings of all your sins to make your prayers to easily be answered. Are you getting it now? The fellowship is very important because irregardless of the numbers, God said, for where two or three are gathered, that is Matthew 18, chapter, uh, verse 20, Matthew 18, verse 20, for where two or three are gathered in my name, praise the Lord, the apostolic teaching will tell you the name of the true God, not the name of your pastor. Not the name of any Babai Saleh, not the name of any um, um, foreign gods or false god, not in the name in that name. He said, Where two or three are gathered in my name, there I am among you. The opposite of it is that. Where to? Let this will shock you now. Where two or three are gathered, not in the name of our Lord God, Satan is there. Hello, should I say that again? Where two or three are gathered, not in the name of God. What happens where two or more are gathered, not in the name of God? Gossip will, will manifest there. But biting will manifest there. Evil intention and contention will manifest from that place. Hatred, jealousy, um, all forms of atrocity will be the topic of their day. Hence, look at what now happened. They will not be exposing themselves to plagues because they are doing something contrary to what God asked them to do. And I pray that that will not be our portion. So today's ministration will give you the enlightenment, the difference between motivational speaking or teachings and the apostolic teaching. And as a Christian, there is nothing wrong with you. There's nothing wrong with you listening to motivational speech, provided they are edifying your line of life. That is, you want to listen, you want to listen to motivational speech concerning um, um, properties. You want to, you want to, you want to go into you want to expand your income. You want to go into um, entrepreneur. Of course, you have to listen to some others that are already there. Not just those ones that are making money because of it. Those ones that are already there. You want to listen to the motivational speech of them. Encouragement of them. They will tell you how to go about it step wisely. Not even all motivational speech are motivational speech because they would they will blab you with all the grammars in the world, but they won't tell you the steps with which to go about what they are trying to about their topics. So, but the apostolic teaching is all about Christ, the love of God. Are you getting it now? The love of God. That what can separate us from the love of God. Then, when those attributes comes, then you are able to stand. When those things comes, like a tribulation, like a, a, a persecution, you will be able to stand. You understand now. You will be able to stand. Praise the Lord. I pray that the power and the authority from above begin to dwell inside of you and I to transform our life to another another realm and to another life. But there is one thing that I want you to understand. You're fellowshipping with another 
disciple or another people that are walking in the in the light of God brings you victory over the power of darkness. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Verse 5 of the book of 1 John says that this is the message which we have heard from him, that is from Jesus Christ, and declare to you that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. God is light. In him, there is no darkness. So walk in the light of God and let your life be transformed. Let the light of God transform your home. Let it transform your relationship. Let it transform your businesses. Let it transform your marriage. Let it transform the life of your, your spouse and your children. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, stay blessed, brethren. And we will continue the part two of this next week. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, praise the Lord. Praise Jesus.